In the last video, we looked at the traits of perfectionism. Do you consider yourself a perfectionist? Well, this video is absolutely for you because today we're talking about how you can move through perfectionism, how you can let go of those traits and stop the perfectionist behavior causing emotional discomfort and upset in your own life. I'm Simon Chappell, I'm the Quit Alcohol Coach, the author of The Sober Survival Guide and the book How to Quit Alcohol in 50 Days. I also run an awesome stop drinking program for members only and you can join right now with 14 days free for you to try it. The website address is on the screen so check it out if that sounds like something that would help you. And of course, I also run this awesome YouTube channel for anyone who wants to change their relationship with alcohol. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon and you'll be notified every time there's a new video. There's new videos every Tuesday and every Thursday, so make sure you don't miss out. So let's get into those tips for letting go of perfectionist traits. And believe me, this is something that showed up in my own life. So I'm talking from my own personal experience of working through perfectionism and starting to be okay with being perfectly imperfect. Now the first tip is to actually start to become aware of the behavior. You may have heard me say it before, but when we're aware, we're halfway there. And that awareness is gonna allow you to pause in the moment, consider the behavior that you're looking at, and consider whether you wanna take a different approach. All the while we're doing things subconsciously without awareness, we run on a kind of autopilot and we don't give ourselves the opportunity to take a different path. So start to notice when this is coming up. Start to notice when you're being too hard on yourself or when you're demanding perfection of yourself or other people. And then pause for a moment, check in with yourself and use some of the other tips in this video. The second tip for letting go of perfectionism is to understand how the behavior negatively impacts your life. Now, don't get me wrong, it can have some benefits. In some respects, it's a blessing and a curse, but it's important for you to learn how to get a handle on this and how you can move through it. There's nothing wrong with being a high achiever, but there's everything wrong with beating yourself up and filling yourself with negative self-talk when you don't achieve the targets you've set yourself or when those targets and objectives define you as an individual, because they don't. There's so much more to you and me than just those things. If you use a journal, write out all the ways in which perfectionism has impacted your life. Really pay attention to it. In my case, I would find myself obsessing over things and putting my desire to be perfect or to reach a particular goal ahead of the important things in my life. And perfectionism also drove me to drink. Literally, it would elevate my stress levels when I felt like I wasn't good enough, when I felt like a failure, or when I was working too hard. And then I would use alcohol to numb out the uncomfortable feelings. That was another negative consequence. So pay attention to how perfectionism is impacting you and notice how it's probably not adding much positivity into your life. And it's a behavior you could do with letting go of to some extent. The third tip for letting go of perfectionism is to consciously focus on the positive. Start to pay attention to the positives. And when we're perfectionists, it can be all too easy to beat ourselves up with that negative internal dialogue and to call ourselves a failure, when actually we've achieved a lot on our path to get in wherever we were at at that point in time. So take a moment to step back and with your eyes open and complete curiosity, look at what you've accomplished, look at how far you've come and notice how you probably have the ability to solve problems and to find solutions that maybe other people would find a struggle. Often perfectionists can achieve so many things and no matter what they achieve, they're never happy. So celebrate the fact that you're doing really well with so many things, you're probably just not paying attention to it. Get really curious about that one. 
The fourth tip is just to take baby steps to start with. Just like learning any new skill, this requires a bit of practice and it might take you a little bit of time. As you develop that new level of self-awareness and that ability to look at what's going on, you'll notice opportunities for you to lean in to your perfectionist traits, for you to face them head on rather than just go with the autopilot flow. And it's there that you can start to make the things that feel uncomfortable feel really comfortable. So actually sit with those feelings and learn how it feels to be in a place where maybe it's not gonna work out perfect. Maybe you are gonna fail at something and be okay with that. Notice how it feels, but take baby steps to start with and maybe just give yourself some small opportunities at the beginning where you can feel what failure feels like or you can experience sitting in a place where it isn't gonna be perfect and being okay with that. And then gradually take greater steps forward and start to grow and develop and lean into it more and more. And soon you'll find that you're becoming really comfortable when things aren't perfect or with uncertainty or facing into failure. Now the next tip is that many people who are perfectionists really struggle to receive criticism. Even if the criticism is coming from a good place, a place of love or a place of caring, it can be really hard to accept criticism. So what I would invite you to do is to invite criticism in. Actively ask people for criticism and notice how it feels when people give you that. Look for opportunities to be criticised. If you were a business, you would welcome all feedback, no matter what people had to say, because you would want to improve and enhance your customer experience. But we're not businesses, we're people, we have emotions, we have feelings. But it's important that you start to get comfortable with those feelings and know that criticism is not an attack. And very often it's coming from a place of caring. Invite criticism in and notice how it feels to receive it. And the next tip is to consider resetting your goals when you start to feel disappointed in yourself. If you're calling yourself a failure or beating yourself up with that inner dialogue, maybe it's time to look at how high you've set that benchmark. Maybe you've given yourself an unachievable goal that you're never really gonna meet and you're just setting yourself up for disappointment and failure. Now, I'm not saying make your life super easy or don't have targets to aim for, but what I am saying is get realistic about what you're demanding of yourself. Make sure you're allowing yourself time to relax, time for yourself. You're not using up all your hours and all your time and letting go of family commitments and letting go of socialising so you focus only on what you're trying to achieve, all because of those perfectionist traits. Try and be fair and create a balance so that your goals are still challenging, but they're ultimately achievable. The next tip is one of the biggest ones that absolutely helped me move through perfectionism. And I like to think of it a little bit like when I go on holiday. Now some people, when they go on holiday, their holiday begins after a long haul flight. They hate flying, it's a massive drag, and eventually they get to their destination and their holiday begins. For other people, they get into relaxed holiday mode as soon as they get to the airport. They're enjoying themselves. The flight is part of the holiday. And the reason I'm sharing this with you is because it's important to enjoy the process, the whole journey, rather than just the outcome. And I think as perfectionists, we can very easily only focus on the outcome. Sometimes we have an attitude of, when I achieve this, I'll be happy. When this happens, everything will be okay. But everything's okay now, and you can enjoy that journey. So try your best to actually experience the journey. Notice what you learn. Notice what feelings come up within you. And learn how you can grow and develop yourself through what you learn on that journey. So start to be that person whose holiday starts when they get to the airport. Now perfectionists can be people pleasers. It's very, very common to see people who demand a lot of themselves or demand a lot of others struggling to say no 
finding it hard to speak their truth and people pleasing on a regular basis. Well, if you wanna move through perfectionism, I recommend working on letting that go. And the best way to do it is to start practicing radical honesty. You can read about radical honesty online, but in a nutshell, it's all about not bending the truth, not exaggerating, not telling white lies, and not telling big lies, just showing up as the authentic version of you and speaking your truth. There is more to it than just that, and I'd recommend you study it a little bit before you start doing it, but in a nutshell, that's a summary of radical honesty. And I'd recommend absolutely doing it if you find yourself people-pleasing, struggling to say no, or finding it difficult to be completely honest and share your feelings authentically. Now, as I mentioned previously, it's really important for you to face in to the feelings that you find uncomfortable. And in most cases, that is a fear of doing things imperfectly, a fear of failure, essentially. You've got to look for those opportunities to fail, to fail consciously, and then use a journal to write down how that feels, what emotions it brought up in you. And you might feel really angry, and you might find that that inner voice comes up. But if you're gonna constantly run away from those things and just strive for more and more and more without actually looking the feelings in the eye, then you're going to struggle to move through this. So you need to start finding it comfortable to do things imperfectly and look for those opportunities, see where you can find them. And as I mentioned, start with baby steps, find small things to start with and start doing them imperfectly. Now, I'm somebody who is always punctual. I'll always turn up to meetings and appointments at least five or 10 minutes early. And I remember when I started exploring this, I had a dentist appointment and I consciously, on purpose, turned up five minutes late to my dentist appointment. I'd never done that before. And I noticed what was happening within me. I felt quite anxious and nervous. I feared being rejected and told that I couldn't attend my appointment, but actually, everything was okay. And I was even really honest with the receptionist and said that I'd done it as an experiment because it's something that I'm working on in myself. She looked rather bemused, but it worked for me. So whatever works for you, you don't have to do that. But look for opportunities where you can be imperfect and where you can intentionally fail. Obviously not in a way that is gonna bring negative consequences into your life, but just in a way where you can feel how it feels for you and notice what emotion come up. It also makes sense to put time and even money into investing in yourself. We're so quick to try and please other people that we often forget to look after number one. And it's one of the least selfish things you can do. I often hear people say to me, well, if I start putting myself first, it's a selfish act. It's absolutely not a selfish act. It's one of the kindest things you can do. Because when you start to love yourself and be kinder to yourself, it radiates outwards and you start to do the same with other people. So invest in what makes you feel good. Try to understand your needs. And you can look at those by exploring your values as an individual and notice how you're meeting them. Maybe you need to meditate more often. Maybe you need to do some therapy or find some other type of relaxation or calming techniques. There's plenty of those on my YouTube channel for you to explore. But take the time to invest in yourself. Take the time to practice self-love and self-care and you'll find that it will give you a massive boost and help you with your mindset. And the last tip for letting go of perfectionism is to stop multitasking. I used to do it all the time. I'd have three or four different tasks on the go, but then I realized that it wasn't efficient and it was also taking up a lot of my mental bandwidth. These days, I concentrate on one task, I get the task done, and then I move on to the next one. Whether that's emptying the dishwasher, making a cup of tea, or submitting my accounts to my accountant. Whatever it is, I will select the task, I will complete the task, and then I'll move on to the next one. It makes life so much easier, and doing things that way makes me feel lighter, and certainly more in control of what I'm doing, and a feeling that things have been completely dealt with properly and thoroughly. There's a lot less room to make mistakes too. 
So hopefully that gives you a few ideas for letting go of perfectionism. I'd love to hear your comments about how perfectionism turns up in your life. You can leave a comment below, I'd love to hear from you. And as I mentioned, if you enjoy the videos on my channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon.